Oh, this question. Yes. Uh, data center interconnect. What is the best design for VXLAN data center interconnect to create one logical data center across two physical locations? And and to me, this is like the wrong question because I mean, I would say, well, don't do that. But if you have to do that, then, and we, we kind of covered this in the first VDC to some degree, um, but I'll, I'll let you guys chime in. If, uh, if, if you got to do this, uh, what, what are your thoughts on a data center interconnect for this? Where um, obviously it sounds like we're stretching layer two. We're using VXLAN to uh, to do it. Oh gosh. Okay. So if you, that's the world you got to live in, um, what? I, just Andre, we didn't hear much from you in the last uh, question. I'm just curious if you run into this. It's it's okay to say no if this is not something you have an opinion on. I I have an opinion on it, uh, but it's not going to help the, <laughs> the person who asked the question. <laughs> um, the, I guess the question is why like you have to st stop and think really long and hard do you actually need layer two right like if if the requirements we want to use uh, uh v motion right across the two data centers have you actually tested this right like what's yes. going to happen when your data center catches on fire you're not v motioning anything you're rebuilding right so did that requirement need to exist in the first place right um uh, but then I, I just can't possibly imagine like why would someone want layer two? I know in my career in the past, I thought it was a good idea to uh, run HA firewalls with one node being in one data center and one being in the other. That's a requirement for layer two. In retrospect, it was a terrible idea because uh, they are very good at becoming, uh, what is it called, uh, uh, both active. Split right? brain. Yeah. So split brain. There you go. That, that's the word I was looking for. Right. And then you kind of stuck troubleshooting that. Or another outage I caused myself because I ran layer two across uh, uh, a data centers uh, using VPLS is that I actually created the loop uh, and took down three data centers with one command. Right. So just layer two across data centers, I think is just is the last choice on my list. Not that it's helpful. That should be on a T-shirt. I, I shut down three data centers with one command. I mean, that's power right there <laughs> in a terrible, horrible way. Uh, so, well, okay, so let me let me let me back this up a step. I mean, we can beat the the stretch layer two thing to death. You, you know, is there a way to interpret this question where it's not layer two? And then, do we have some comments here? You know, about uh, you know, about this, about just maybe just data center interconnect broadly, best practices, and what that looks like. So I'll jump in. There is a, a use case for VXLAN at layer three for multi-tenancy. So to make it look a little bit like MPLS, that's the right way to do this. So you can filter VXLAN, EVPN has layer three routes and layer two routes. So you can filter the layer two routes at the edge. So I can extend the multi-tenancy only at layer three. So you can do L2 anywhere within a data center. You can do anything L2 within the other data center but you can't do L3, L2 across. That's the right way to do VXLAN for DCI. If everything is terrible and you work for basically every enterprise that's ever existed, um, there's two ways to look at it. One, how big are you? And you know, I was talking to somebody who was trying to do like EVPN, multi-site with OTV and all this stuff. And I started talking to them and they're like, yeah, yeah, we run in three data centers. It's like, okay, like how big? And he's like, well, we've got three racks in each data center. Well. And I'm like, nine racks and you're going to do OTV? No, no, just like treat the whole thing as one data center. I mean, latency concerns aside, but like don't over-engineer it. You know, if you're less than say 100 racks, just treat it all as one. If you're greater than that, then you have to look at some, uh, the biggest thing is how do I replicate traffic? So some switches do what's called headed replication, where that switch in hardware is going to replicate, say, 100 or 100 up to 128 unicast packets that go to 128 switches. Some of them will rely on multicast to flood multicast out through the environment. And that ends up being your limiter on how you have to do that between data centers. You know, if I have 500 racks, I have to figure out what is the technology that will allow me to flood an ARP that is VXLAN encapsulated across 500 switches. <laughs> so I can talk about a design we did last year with NSX with 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 a lot of these t uh, topics in it. Um, 
per I wasn't involved in the actual DCI part of it because you know my requirements towards the the guys doing that was hey as long as my VTAPs can talk to each other and my controllers can reach quorum I'm fine right even if I go out through MTLS and back into the other site I can get my traffic there it's not going to be an issue it will work um, one of the things that came up very early, we put our foot down on a customer on this was, no, we're not going to run storage replication on the same DCI link as the, the VTAP traffic. Like, no, you need a lower latency link for that. And we separated that because they were doing like an EMC Metro cluster because otherwise that vMotion has to move the disk and, and the memory across to be able to move things live. And they made me push this into a single NSX topology, like one logical data center spread out across two sites with synchronized storage. Um, what I ended up convincing the customer to do, because I, I said, look, you're, you're very unlikely that you're going to vMotion, you know, 1700 VMs from one side of this thing to the other. Can you do it? You bet. But um, what I ended up making them do for the most part in the design was run active active NSX topologies. So there was a uh, uh, one set of uh, subnets that was advertised out of data center B and another set of uh, data center A. And the nice part about it is the administrator could put the VM administrator could put a virtual machine into either topology in either data center, and it would simply just work, but your ingress points were controlled by the routing protocols, right? And so most of your traffic, so you basically choose, you could choose where you want to run it or where you, uh, but but where you choose, what network you chose, chose where your traffic would ingress. And then NSX nicely, nicely t takes care of, you know, making that a unicast conversation when VMA wants to talk to VMB. None of that really matters, right? Um, it just kind of works. But I had to give them enough controls because they were both trying to do a little bit of a DR scenario. Like they were... It was, it was both DR and availability mixed into the same conversation. And the thing was, is they actually didn't know a lot about these VMs. They, they didn't know, even though you'd think, well, three or 4,000 VMs, surely the operations team knows what they do. In fact, they don't. They have no idea what a large portion of these things do, right? And if, if the DR recovery plan involves doing, you know, up, up, up and downing or reIPing networks along the way and all it was it was it was all about the things they may or may not have to change along the way and they're like look we we really don't want to change anything so the hardest part was going through the logic and saying okay what happens if we pull the cord what happens if you do it manually what happens if you want to do it selectively and what we ended up getting to like i said was the active active topologies and then i got it down to okay you go to this router you change this value and all your networks flip to ingress out of the other side and now you're active over here on both sides but now the the data center a becomes an extension of data center b and i gave them those fulcrums literally one value value to change on either side but it was there was a lot there was a lot of whiteboard time a lot of logic checking but when it came to the dci i was like look i want two paths if we're going to run this i want two paths just just for dci for vm traffic and you keep your storage traffic away from me because i know that will take it all if you ever if it ever uh, comes mm -hmm. down to it but they, it was that was a hard design um, and to be honest, uh, we went pretty detailed, but I, I think there was some stuff left on the table for like remote witness or quorum. If you look at how EMC does their uh, metro cluster, um, you know, they, they always have that tertiary space where it's making judgment on, you know, uh, are you split braining or not? And I would have loved to put a third site into the topology actually to, to provide me a little bit of witness, but maybe we'll return to that later. Thank you.